Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this cracker shaped design card using Scan & Cut Canvas. I um, created the base card, I created this pattern paper matting layer and these two card end pieces which I'm not sure if you can see but I put them on my scoreboard with the pattern paper with the textured side down and I scored lines at one eighth intervals just to give a bit of texture obviously if you've got something like a big shot or a cuddle bug you could use an embossing folder to do a similar type thing or use a different design okay so I'm in scan and cut canvas and I'm just going to show you how I quickly made my cracker shaped card so I came over to the basic shapes and I chose a rectangle now I dragged it out until it was about five inches no, maybe about three inches high I think I can't remember but I dragged it I made I started off with a basic shape you can resize this any size you want obviously I'm just showing you roughly how I did it I have to say I made this card weeks ago so that's why I'm a little bit unsure of the exact measurement I used but once it's made you can manipulate it and drag it out and drag it up and in and at the end and resize it as you want. So I started off with a rectangle. Then I came and I got a triangle. And then I flipped the triangle so the point was down. So I came to edit and flip vertically. And then I resized it down and adjusted this all by eye. If you've watched any of the other little Christmas cards I've been posting recently. These were all done the same way, literally just by eye. I didn't use any specific measurements, I just created them and then I can resize them as I want and cut them at whatever size I want to make them. So I got the triangle and using these two blue dots that are across the middle, I positioned those on this top line until I was happy with the dimension. I might just take this down ever so slightly. And then I created a duplicate and I positioned that one roughly where I wanted it. So once I'd got those two roughly in place, I selected one, held the shift key down and selected the other. Then I came to edit and I aligned them along the top edge and that just lines these two top edges up together and then I, while they were selected I made them a group so these are now just a group I then selected everything and went to edit center and that centers these two triangles so with these two triangles as a group I then, while they were selected, made them a duplicate and then I went to edit and flip vertically and brought these down here and I'm roughly just positioning these two outer middle blue dots along this line. So now with those selected I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the other two. Now I'm going to come to edit and center and they center up to each other and while they're both selected now I'm going to make them a group so this is one group and this is your separate item so I'm just going to bring them back on top select both and I'm going to center horizontally and vertically just to put them back in position now the triangles have to be on top of the rectangle so I'm just going to click here and so long as they all select, I know they're on top. If this rectangle had have selected, you would need to right click and send it to the back. So now I've got everything centered and the four triangles are on the top of this rectangle. I'm gonna select everything and go to edit, subtract. And that's chopped those triangles out and that's given me the shape from a base card. Now the first thing I'm going to do is right click and make a duplicate and put that over there. <coughs> this is now going to be half of my base card. So I'm going to make another duplicate and I'm going to flip it just in case this wasn't completely symmetrical. So with this duplicate selected I'm going to go to edit, 
flip horizontally. It won't look as though anything's happened, but it will have flipped it. And now I'm going to drag it up and just align it so it slightly overlaps the other one here. I'm going to select both, go to Edit Center, so they center to each other and they should be overlapped. You only want the tiniest of overlap here because when you fold it, you don't want to distort the shape of your base card. But if you've not got enough of an overlap, it won't weld. But usually, if, you, if I zoom in on this center bit here, you can see that there is a gap, so you know they're, they're overlapping. So I'll just go back to fit to mat so you can see. So I'm going to select both, edit and weld. And that's now the base card. Again, if you want a paper insert, select it, go to edit, offset, take your offset down. I generally use about 0 0.08. Again, that's just my preference. You can use what you want. Say inward, say OK. Select the inward and I'm going to make it red so I know that's my insert. Then this one is obviously half of the main black base card, but I want to make my matting layer that I cut in pattern paper. So my matting layer was 0 0.08 smaller. So again, I'm going to make it smaller, but before I do anything, I'm going to create another duplicate because I'll need that in a few minutes. So this one, I'm going to come back to edit, offset, take it down to 0 0.08, say inward, and say OK. And then select the smaller one, which will be my blue pattern paper on my card. And I'm just going to make it green. Make it a nice bright green. See if you can see it. In fact, I'll make it a dark green. And that then sits on the front of my card. Now, to make the white pieces here on the ends which I cut and then put on my scoreboard and put score lines on but if you've got something like a big shot or a cuttle bug or something like that and you've got a nice textured embossing folder you could do that with them. I took my basic shape and again I'm going to chop it up so I'm going to get a rectangle I'm going to rotate it, holding the shift key down so it keeps it vertical, completely vertical. Squash it in and just drag it out so it's bigger than the depth of this bit here. Move that out of the way because I don't think I need that now, but just in case. I'm going to bring this over and again I'm going to line it up and I'm going to zoom in because I want it, I want this thin rectangle to line up directly over this point here. So using the arrows on my keyboard, I'm going to shift it over until it's directly on that point. I'm going to go back to fit to map. Now this thin rectangle is going to be what's going to cut this in half for us, so that has to be on top. So I'm going to select both and go to edit, subtract, and that's cut that in half but this is still a group when you select it so right click and hit divide and then it can move that out of the way now I'm going to zoom in on here and just have a look now you can see that I just wasn't quite exact I can either undo and move it or you can double click to expose the nodes and just drag your nodes down and up at this end into line when you click on it now and have a look at it it's a bit just needs to straighten up a bit and then come down here zooming in really helps on this kind of thing take it in so it's straighter and go back to fit to map so that looks okay and that is what I cut. But on this particular card, I cut it so it just sat over the pattern paper. So I need to take it down because this now 
is bigger than the pattern paper. This is the size of the actual base card. So again, I'm going to select it, edit, offset, take the offset down to 0 0.08 and say OK. Get the smaller section. Now, if I just move the red bit out of the way, you'll see what I mean. This is the pattern paper that sits on the front of the base card. And this is the white card that I wanted to sit directly over that pattern paper, but to be still slightly inset off the base card. So now I need two of these. So I'm going to select this one, right click and create a duplicate. And then I'm just going to flip it. And that's what sits on the other end. So these are all the elements to my card now. So that's my base card. That's my piece of pattern paper. This is my insert for my card. You don't need to cut that if you don't want. I tend to buy coloured paper and I try and match the colour up to whatever colour I put as a matting layer on the outside. You could use plain white copy paper or I would probably use a nice pale blue because on my card I, I cut my matting layer here in blue pattern paper. So that's your matting layer and then these two bits are white so I would keep them together with this and I'd cut those all out at the same time. These are not needed anymore so I can delete them. Again, you give your project a name and you save it into Scan and Cut Canvas. You can obviously resize this, just layer it all back up together if you're going to resize it. Make sure everything sits on top of everything and then select everything, right click and make it a group and you can then drag this out or make it smaller, you can drag it out this way if you want it thinner and longer, it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. But don't forget, make sure you ungroup everything and separate out all your sections before you save it and then it just makes it easier when you bring it into your scan and cut machine. Obviously make sure everything sits within your mat. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.